Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. I'm going to talk about uh, topic number six, design, prototyping and constructions. Uh, the subtopic of this uh, presentation will be based on prototyping. What is prototype? Uh, types of prototype. Okay, a conceptual design including conceptual model, uh, the element of conceptual models and uh, uh, related with uh, meta models and so on. Number three, concrete design. Number four, using scenario. Number five, generating prototype. And the last one is constructions. Okay, let me see number one. What is prototype? Okay, if you're looking into the concept of prototype, what you're going to learn in this slide is about what is prototype, why prototype, different kind of prototyping that can be divided into actually three, not only two, but... Uh, number one is low fidelity, number two high fidelity, number three is in between that called medium fidelity. Okay, in terms of compromising in prototype. Uh, okay, this is something related with another one that called medium uh, fidelity. Medium. Medium fidelity. So, this is the, the, the things that uh, I'm going to talk uh, in this lecture. Okay, so what is prototype? Okay, if you're looking into the slide, you can see that uh, example of prototype can be a miniature car, miniature building or town, and you can see in ICT uh, area or computer a computer science area, the prototype can be based on a visual prototype through like PowerPoint. HTML, things like uh, uh, what we call sticky notes, or storyboard, things like that. Okay, uh, this is a few examples that uh, show what is a prototype. You can search in Google if you type what is prototype, there will be a massive result of what is a prototype. Okay, if you're looking into a more uh, structured way, uh, actually a prototype uh, also have different dimension in interaction design itself is a kind of series of screen sketches or maybe it can be through a storyboarding or a PowerPoint slide it can be a prototype as well or maybe uh, through video prototype or video simulations uh, to use the system or maybe a lump of wood like palm pilot and so on a cardboard mock-up and a lot more, lot more example that you can find as a prototype so what to prototype. Normally people are using prototype to show some technical issue, to show the workflow of the system design and to show the screen layout or user interface design or information display. All right. Why we need a prototype also can uh, overcome some difficulty, controversial issues or critical area. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of uh, reason why we need a prototype but uh, if you search in Google, you can see a lot of articles relating with prototype. So in this slide, I will, I will give you a very brief idea what, why prototype. Okay, you can see uh, number one to get some evaluations, right? Uh, to get feedback from the user, and uh, if you're talking about user, it can be divided into many types of user, including a stakeholder, team members, developer, user, actually uh, like citizen, things like that. So why you need a prototype is also to encourage some reflections of your uh, design aspect and also to get some early response from actual user. Okay, The prototype actually can answer a lot of questions, especially related with usability issues. And the prototype uh, actually can be divided into few dimensions. In this case, we have five dimensions. Normally, we have five dimensions. Number one dimension is appearances, appearance. Number two, the data, dimension of data in prototyping. Uh, what kind of data, size of data, uh, numbers of data involved in prototype, and maybe it's involving like organization, uh, types of people who are going to provide the data. Uh, number three dimension is functionality, is involving something like user functionality or user needs or maybe a system functionality. Number four, in terms of interactivity, uh, including such as input behavior, output behavior, feedback behavior, or maybe information behavior. 
the interactivity in prototype is one of the very in, important elements or dimension need to be highlighted in your final project. Okay, the last dimension is spatial structure, is to show some arrangement of user interface, uh, the relationship between uh, the interface or information element can be shown through this dimension. So there are five dimensions altogether in uh, prototyping. Okay, so in terms of uh, dimension, we are also looking into uh, manifestation of dimension that can be, can be divided into three. Number one is through material. Number two is resolutions. What is material itself? It's a medium, okay? For example, how you're going to use them, uh, how you to deliver the prototype, like using a paper and pencil, uh, maybe you can use some visual, visual uh, uh, basic uh, programming. I think no more visual, visual basic is, is old tools. But today we have uh, a lot of uh, new tools like uh, Visual C++. But that one is a very high-end, uh, high-fidelity prototype. Now, uh, Dimension also refer to uh, resolution uh, that involve level of details. Okay, uh, High fidelity means that Fidelity that the details of the prototype. Okay, in this case, resolution is also one of the, the manifestation dimension in prototyping. Uh, number three is a scope, so range of what you cover in your manifestations. Okay, so in this prototype, you have to understand the dimension of prototype can be divided into five: number one, appearance, data; number two, data; number three, functionality; number uh, for interactivity and number five is partial structure. In this case, uh, you have a manifestation of dimension that can be divided into three types of dimension, material, resolution, and scope. So to make it simple to understand, uh, if you're looking into types of prototype that can be divided into three actually. Number one, we start, uh, but normally in many books, they are just talking about two uh, types of prototyping. Number one is low fidelity prototype. Number two is high fidelity prototype. Okay, what is low fidelity prototype? Low fidelity prototype normally use medium, uh, not finer medium like uh, like papers and pencil, cardboard, and normally is quite cheap and easily to manage on change. So, uh, example in low fidelity prototype can be a sketches of screen, card base, storyboard, or wizard OS. OS. Okay. You, so if you're looking into low fidelity prototype, this is really uh, connected with your final project of ACI because what you're going to develop is until the low fidelity prototype or maybe you can go for medium fidelity prototype. What is medium fidelity prototype? It is in between low fidelity and high fidelity. For example, certain part of your prototype functional, functionality or system functionality can be worked like high fidelity. The other part of the system can be work not really like high fidelity, but it work as low fidelity prototype. So in that case, we can say that a medium fidelity prototype. For example, why we need a medium fidelity prototype? Because sometimes we unable to do high fidelity prototype due to uh, technological constraint. So that's the reason why we need a medium fidelity prototype. Okay. So uh, example of low fidelity prototype. Uh, normally use uh, with scenario and then normally it can bring more detail and chance to role play okay it is a series of sketches showing how user might process through a task using a device the device okay normally people use low fidelity prototype is to test the early design of the prototype for example if you're looking into these sketches you can see the storyboard number one drive car to gas pump okay this is the storyboard uh, to you know to buy petrol okay to to fill in petrol into your car number two take a nozzle from pump number three and put it into the car gas tank okay gas tank is a petrol gas uh, petrol tank number four squeeze trigger uh, squeeze trigger on the nozzle until tank is full then replace nozzle when tank is full and pay cashier okay this storyboard maybe apply for country like UK or maybe US, okay? But if Malaysia, they're not going to apply this kind of storyboard. Normally, they start with number six first, pay cashier, and then 
uh, of course, number one is number one. Of course, number one, you have to drive car to the gas station. Okay. Uh, number two will be um, uh, six. Number six in this storyboard, and continue and change uh, until number five. So it start with number one, number six, number number two, number three, number four, number five. Okay, that's the way how in Malaysia uh, uh, will be. Okay. Example of low fidelity prototype also uh, in this screen you can see uh, we are using papers prototype. In this case we are using uh, what we call a stencil or maybe a, a template for you to develop a mobile uh, prototype using pen and pencil. Okay, this is the example. And you can see there's a lot of uh, information from adopt.com uh, to show the difference low and high fidelity use. Okay. So this is example of uh, card based prototype in which you can use same style card base almost the same like uh, uh, stencil style of mobile prototype and then this is a post it notes prototype sticky notes in which you can make use of it easy to change easy to update things like that okay and then this is another types of low fidelity prototype wizard os okay wizard os is quite popular uh, um, in many research area so sometimes we unable to do it technically so that's why we need this approach uh, to show and to prove the concept of uh, prototyping okay this is an example you can see from the YouTube uh, I can show you now okay this is a uh, YouTube to show you wizard OS wizard of OS hello this is a wizard of OS uh, prototype technique and when this you use the pencil and it's a diet application okay. you can uh, sign in with your google or facebook accounts or if you want you can create your own diet application account to do that just click on sign up and then, then we will using a this video page to comes show and the then fill in the blanks so that's the concept you can uh, have a look at yourself later on let go to the lecture notes okay all right, next we are talking about, I'm going to talk about high fidelity prototype. Normally, uh, high fidelity prototype is uh, nearly like a real one. Okay, so that's the keyword. Normally use material that you would expect to be the final product. Prototype look more like the final system than a low fidelity, of course. High fidelity can be developed by integrating existing hardware and software component. Okay, uh, danger that user think that they can complete system. Okay. It's not easy to develop anti high fidelity prototype, but this is an example of high fidelity prototype. Uh, okay, but actually you can use more cup to sh to look like high fidelity, but actually it's not high fidelity. So this is an example of high fidelity prototype, and also you can see this uh, particular URL to show Nelson Jacob Nelson URL talking about case study on designing a prototype, how they make use of prototype in designing their case study uh, problems. Okay, this is an advantage and disadvantage when you're using low fidelity. This is quite popular question uh, in your final exam, especially uh, HCI uh, final exam question. There's a, uh, many times this kind of question appear. Okay, I don't know about this semester, but I think uh, you have to take care of these questions. Okay. Uh, advantage of low fidelity, of course, is lower development cost. You can uh, evaluate multiple design concepts and it's very fast to implement and is proof of concept. But in terms of disadvantage of low fidelity, of course, uh, limited error checking, poor detail specification, and then uh, facilitator driven because somehow you need uh, to help user to understand how the prototype works. Okay. Uh, but if you're looking into high fidelity, there's a lot of advantage and also disadvantage. So uh, I want you to look into this slide in detail and try to get more information on internet. What is the disadvantage and advantages of low and high fidelity prototype? Right, this is another important slide. Um, quite popular, appear in final exam as well. Uh, the prototype actually compromised uh, in two types of compromise. Okay, number one, horizontal. Number two, vertical. Okay, what is horizontal? Okay, horizontal prototyping normally provide wide range of function but with little details. Okay, 
So it means that horizontal and they have almost all but in terms of uh, concept only or, or very uh, first layer. But when uh, come to the detail, there will be very less detail. Okay, compare with vertical uh, prototype, they provide a lot of detail with only few functionality. So it means that they have one subtopic but in very detail. Whereas for horizontal, they have a lot of subtopic, for example, but have very little detail of every subtopic. So that's the difference between horizontal and vertical. Okay. Um, okay. So look, this is example of horizontal and vertical. See, this is uh, YouTube to show you. I want you to go by yourself because we uh, try to finish this lecture as soon as possible. This YouTube source, you can check them yourself and try to understand. Okay, prototype, you see this, uh, this, this image, horizontal, vertical, uh, what is, does it mean by this? You have to look at the YouTube. Okay, next we are talking about conceptual design. Uh, this is very important as well. Now, uh, after prototype, uh, then we come to the subtopic as conceptual design. Okay, so conceptual design uh, normally involving transform user requirement into a conceptual model. Okay, what is conceptual model in this case? Right, by definition, there's a lot of information that you can find in the internet as well. But normally, conceptual model is an online of what people can do with product or with a software and what concepts are needed to understand and interact with it. Okay, so if you still remember the story that I told you uh, involving a speed train in Japan, they are using a bird uh, watcher, uh, as a solution, okay, the, one of the engineer of speed train in Japan are bird watcher. Uh, this solution was based on King feature bird, especially in designing the 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 first uh, the head of the train. Okay, has been redesigned and follow bird uh, King feature bird uh, shape. Then they solve a lot of problem, especially noise problem. Of the speed train so I want you to search and get more information I think I already let you know about this issue of uh, uh, speed train design okay and they have a concept uh, when they do the speed train design and this is what we call a uh, mimicry design they are using a mimicry design concept in order to solve a speed train design okay so some of uh, a sensor can be used to detect uh, user behavior Okay, uh, how user interact with the product, uh, maybe use mood board, okay, and a lot of more sensors. Today we are in fourth industrial revolution, we are dealing with IoT, things like that can be useful in designing your conceptual model in human computer interactions. Okay, if you're looking into conceptual model, uh, they have a lot of perceptions but I try to highlight what is usability engineer perception okay in usability engineer conceptual model they might consist of storyboard wireframe or visual prototype so that uh, based on usability engineer point of view alternatively for technical architect like database programmer or software developer they uh, might uh, transfer the conceptual model uh, or representing their conceptual model through uh, entity uh, relationship diagram, ERD diagram, for example, or maybe you can go uh, the, the the user design, user usability engineer or software developer can look into a class collaboration diagram or uh, UML diagram, one of the most popular UML tool. Okay, so this is uh, from visualparadigm.com to show a conceptual model, one of the most simpler uh, diagram among all is using ERD. See, this is the sample of ERD diagram. And then uh, a few tools for conceptual design. You can make use of Lucid Chart. Okay, this is, I think it's quite, uh, it's free, sign up for free. You can try Lucid Chart to develop a conceptual model, UML model, or in fact, a flow chart also can be considered as uh, representing something related with this, uh, this definition. What people can do with your prototype or with your proposed system. So that's all about uh, conceptual model and I stop uh, first.